I'll bet you could travel all over the country and not find an individual who wouldn't fight to protect his freedom. And that's the way it should be, of course. But every once in a while, it's a good idea to redefine the word freedom and ask ourselves, what does freedom mean to me as an individual? Dr. Mortimer J. Adler, director of the Institute for Philosophical Research, has written a booklet titled The Challenge of the 20th Century. I think it's terrific, and I'd like to share some of his ideas with you. Maybe you'll find them as interesting as I did. Dr. Adler points out that just a hundred years ago, leisure and learning were the privilege of the few. For the great mass of men and women, the years of schooling were short and the days of labor long. Those who worked all or most of their lives for a living had little free time to continue with learning after a brief schooling in childhood had prepared them for the time-consuming occupations of their adult life. I believe we should remind ourselves from time to time how really fortunate we are today, because within the memory of some men and women living today, there were times when a man got up while it was still dark, ate a meager breakfast, and trudged off to work. He didn't get home until after dark at night, so tired he could only eat again and drop off to sleep. And then the whole thing started all over again the next morning. This went on six days a week, and it frequently started when a boy was in his teens. For this back-breaking, mind-dulling work, he was paid barely enough to keep food on the table, and then only the basic foods. For the women, it was the same. Wood-burning stoves, no electricity, primitive medicine, and even that difficult or impossible to obtain. She bore the children, flirted with deadly infections, and worked herself into an early grave. With the dawn of industrial democracy at the turn of this century, extraordinary changes began to take place which affected the lives of all of us. The increasing productivity of industrial machinery gradually emancipated most men from a lifetime of grinding toil. The years of schooling for children were lengthened. The hours of the working day and the span of the working life were shortened. As more and more men were given the political and economic conditions of freedom, it became possible for more and more human beings to lead the lives of free men. Now, the Declaration of Independence declared all men free and equal by natural right, but it took more than 150 years of political, economic, and social progress to achieve even a working approximation of the ideal the founding fathers of the Republic had envisaged as a reality for their posterity, if not for their own generations. But today, men who have all the opportunities of freedom can, nevertheless, live like slaves. For at the beginning of a human life, the fight begins against the most tyrannical of masters. The master's name is ignorance. And to the extent that we permit this despot to exercise control over us, we are slaves. A free life with lots of leisure time on our hands gives us the opportunity to get rid of this master. The things we should most actively seek are knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, for they will endure through a lifetime, and they will give us control over our lives and our environment. Learning should not end when we leave school. It is then that it should really begin. Knowledge, then, is freedom. Learning is wealth to the poor, an honor to the rich, an aid to the young, and a support and comfort to the aged. An hour a day spent in the pursuit of knowledge can open to us great and undreamed of vistas.